Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome, I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Thank you for joining Sister Power. Our special VIP guest needs no introduction. Maya Satora Ng, advisor to the Obama Foundation, author, educator, truth teller, wife, mother to two gorgeous daughters, sister of the 44th United States President Barack Obama, is here to talk about peace. Our title for this episode, Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me. Welcome, Maya. Thank you, Sharon. Happy to be here. Oh, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, congratulations to your new position, advisor to the Obama Foundation. Yes, thank you. We're excited. We're going to be um, building um, leadership programming uh, in the Asia Pacific region uh, next year, and we're just getting started, uh, and we are launching probably in January. But I think it's an opportunity to really think about not only um, what the region has to offer the world, but also what Hawaii has to offer um, the, the region. And uh, we're hoping to use our uh, networks and these opportunities to uh, really take people who are doing incredible things in the world um, and to wrap around them mentors and and others who can support them and help them take their projects to the next level. Uh, we want to um, expand their reach and, and to uh, raise their voices because a lot of wonderful, powerful uh, work is happening in education and advocacy and entrepreneurship and uh, other fields. And we want that good news to um, be spread and used to inspire others and to activate um, people's civic engagement all over. Uh, and, and we think this is a, a great way to do it. So I'm excited about these new directions. I'm excited, too. I know you're a board member also, and now is that no correct? Longer. You're not a board member? No mm -hmm. longer? Mm -hmm. So you've switched over to advisor to Obama Foundation. Yeah, what, I'm a consultant. You're a consultant. Mm -hmm. What is your role? So my role is to help identify um, young leaders, probably age 25 to 40, um, across the Asia Pacific region who um, will be brought together here in Hawaii or uh, perhaps in the region. Uh, and we will be supporting them and helping them to collaborate and to engage in uh, shared problem solving and to attend to uh, issues as far ranging as uh, climate change, resilience and uh, environment, disaster mitigation, peace, conflict, intercommunal dialogue, uh, women's empowerment and more. Oh, I like that. Women's empowerment. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we have a picture of you, with, uh, Sisters Empowering Hawaii, gave you an award. Yes. Social so Justice, Global Peace and Social Justice Award. There is your award right there. And my goodness, Maya, I want to ask you, what would you tell your 25-year-old self that now you are going around the country and you're talking about the peace movement needs a rebrand. Mm -hmm. Now, that is not to say that the people who have engaged in activism and movement building in the past um, should not be fully acknowledged for all of their hard work and their accomplishments. Um, but young people have new tools. They have new ways of communicating. They have new priorities and new challenges. And so I really, um, as the director of the Matsunaga Institute for Peace in recent years and um, as a um, peace advocate, yes. um, have been trying hard to elevate the voices of young people and to make um, everyone um, sort of commit to allowing them to build a new movement that is practical, that is action-oriented, that doesn't uh, rely on the accomplishments of the past, but really takes an innovative approach to uh, problem solving today and utilizes um, the inclusiveness and the 
um, optimism of uh, young people to uh, create momentum and to give us all a sense of uh, possibility and, and um, I hope uh, to empower us with um, in the feeling that in spite of um, the natural disasters in the world, in spite of the fact that um, hate crimes have gone up 17 percent, mm. in spite of the rancor and the, um, uh, the anger and the conflict uh, in this country and elsewhere, in spite of the challenges to human rights, that there is a lot that we have to look forward to. Um, if young people can be made to uh, see their own power, if they can be supported in building action plans and doing backwards mapping and in, um, you know, movement building, uh, then they will see that their efforts um, are bearing fruit, that they are not um, disempowered, that they're not helpless. And um, I think that what will happen then is the kind of bold civic engagement that is not reactive, but is about making um, communities better uh, through peace building and actions every day, mm -hmm. and that is proactive. And it's about, as Martin Luther King said, building our beloved community and shaping that vision for the future. I think so much of what is happening now feels defensive. Yeah. It, people feel anxious. And we need to, I think, um, and through action that is demonstrable and the stories that are told, uh, through um, uh, the incredible peace work that is happening today, we can uh, shift that anxiety and move from kind of a post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth. And it's just something about the word peace that feels good. I and mean, even when you say it, it just it's a feel-good word. And I think we should use it more. When I was coming up, they would say, peace, sister, or peace, my queen. Mm -hmm. And I think if we say peace and love more, mm -hmm. that that changes uh, the, uh, the personal dynamics of how we feel about ourselves. But speaking of personal peace, how does one develop personal peace? Well, I think that there are so many ways. But I think that you said something really important, which is that the word peace isn't used very much. And I think it is because people think of it as an idealized, um, uh, you know, utopian thing that is off in the distance. And it, people don't see how meaningful it is and practical in their everyday lives. And so um, in terms of developing personal peace, one thing that I think is important is for us to realize that Peace is about the way that we speak and that mm. peace actions can range from, you know, today I had a big lunch and we talked a lot about um, the choices we make about food sovereignty, about food security in the world and about nutrition. And so personal peace can come from, you know, paying attention to wellness, uh, to, um, you know, our uh, commitment to the community through conversation and dialogue. Uh, I personally like to meditate and engage in mindfulness. That helps with anxiety reduction. So little things like sort of saying, you know, to bring us back to our bodies, you know, what are two things we can taste, hear, see, touch, you know, to remind us that there is so much beauty today and in this moment. Um, personal peace is also about just taking breaths, communing mm. with nature, uh, remembering our commitment to the environment, um, but also um, spending time uh, in places of tranquility and uh, serenity, and uh, also building community with sisters, with you know people um, who are like-minded, with whom we can feel a sense of a connection, you know, combating loneliness. A lot of young people feel lonely. Yes. People who are engaging in extremist behavior often do so because they lack community. Well, I you know I love reading the P, your the peace movement needs a rebrand, but this reflection questions. I, I just want the audience to hear what you had to say. Uh, on a show, I don't know where it was, but you said believes. Our guest, meaning you, believes that peace building is teachable and that fear is at the heart of all of our conflicts and problems. 
If we can develop courage, moral courage, and all kinds of courage, we can heal our community, our country, and our world. And this is a question, and you have a question afterwards, and I want to ask you. Can you recall a time when you overcame fear and built courage in order to resolve conflict in a peaceful way? Mm -hmm. I do it all the time, mm. because I think um, one of the things that I, makes me feel fear is this notion that maybe the things that we do are not enough, or yeah. that there's nothing that we can really do to make things better, or that, you know, um, there's a divide that can't be bridged and that sort of thing. So I talk a lot and do a lot of leaning into um, my discomfort. And I talk a lot about, you know, the need to be uncomfortable with people and to change our lens, wash our eyes. Um, chuchimata means to wash one's eyes. And there are so many ways that we can do that. We can develop, in other words, a dialogical mindset. And I think that that is really helpful for building courage. As an example, when uh, someone was trolling me online, I went to see their website, and um, there were things on there that I expected, but there was also a lot of affection for um, this person's grandchildren and pets, uh, affection that I share. And I'm reminded that, you know, these folks are doing the best that they can yeah. with the information they have, which may not be, um, in my view, accurate or healthy, but um, but they are human, and we all have these universal needs. And there is, in thinking about what a person needs first, as opposed to what a person's position is, or you know, um, you know what uh, their perspective is. Even um, we can build courage to kind of open up our hearts, to to open the gate, as they say, to. Um, other people. And so a lot of courage building for me is about, you know, persisting even when it seems like we're not doing well. It's about reaching out even though it seems that people's views are impenetrable. It's about believing and feeling hopeful in humankind even when there is violence uh, yeah. before us. And so courage is not just about that great leap, it is also about you know, the sure-footed steps forward where we keep trying, we keep working, we engage in action, we contribute to our countries, we go and vote, and we just, it's like walking down that long road where you don't know where you're going to end up, and uh, you're hungry and thirsty, but you keep on, uh, keeping on anyway. And that's real courage, in my view. Well, you answered my next question. I was going to ask you, what is your definition of, well, I'll put it this way then. What is your definition of a courageous woman? Is right now, mm -hmm. you know, women, you know, we are we in a lot of powerful places, but we are being attacked. So let's talk about the definition of a courageous woman. Well, I think a courageous woman is one who is not afraid uh, to tell her story, who recognizes that um, there is great power in mentoring and lifting up. Uh, others, so someone who helps young women and young men to um, rethink perhaps um, what it means even to be a woman uh, or to be a man. I was thinking about, um, uh, I was recently in Dharamsala, India, and I met Jimmy Briggs, who has an organization called uh, Man Up, and uh, there's, um, you know, uh, something called him for her, and I met a young man who was speaking at the UN. And so we need to think about, you know, helping young men to redefine um, what it, what manhood means too. But for me, courageous womanhood is about thinking about the myriad ways that we can be a woman and how um, adventurous and uh, bold and uh, creative uh, women are. It's about uplifting other women and uh, connecting with them and and uh, and helping. Perfectly said. And we'll take a quick break and we'll continue our talk about peace. Okay. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics 
and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm gonna keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're gonna talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're gonna definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Welcome back to Sister Power, and our topic for today is let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me and my very special guest, Maya Satoro Ng, is in the studio with us. And it's something earlier that you said, and I was telling you during the break, I was looking for it, and then it said, do not let people pull you into their storm, pull them into your peace. Mm -hmm. And I, that was so, that resonated with me, and because you can be pulled into a person's um, oh, yes. world mm -hmm. and forget about this. I just want young people to know it's cool to be kind to each other. It is cool to be kind. And you were asking me what it means to be courageous, um, you know, before the break, and I ended with, you know, those who are courageous uh, have the courage to help, you know, others. And I really think that that is at the heart of power, you know, that we give energy to people. And when we engage in service, we become so powerful, I think. And, and this is about sister power. And for yes. me, that's it. And I do believe women need to own their power and they need to feel it. Um, and part of that is, um, you know, uh, not um, letting mana munchers, you know, that people to bring you into their storm where, you know, you feel diminished by virtue of um, the way that you look or, you know, I think about, you know, I'm, I'm letting my hair grow gray and, and, um, that's the new color. Is you it? know, <laughs> oh yes. Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to be sassy in other ways, but the point being that, that, um, you know, there is, um, a, a lot of feeling of invisibility with women as they age. And, yeah. you know, this, this notion that, um, you know, people can um, make you feel, you know, pulled down, let down, diminished, less than, is something we need to really challenge, especially in my view with our young people, with, with women of all ages. But I just think about, you know, new media and social media being such a tool, a force for connection, uh, for um, bridge building, for illumination, for movement building, but then also how it makes young women feel torn down and that's part of the the storm you know and we we need to challenge that with you know helping people to you know take deep breaths and we need to pull them into uh, our peace and we need there's a, a friend of mine I quote a lot lately he um, had a tough job and um, not an easy life and every time I asked him how he was doing, he would say the same thing. He would say, never had it so good. And uh, so lately I've been talking about him because lately I've been feeling so peaceful. And that has come with a lot of work, but also with the support of a lot of others. Um, and it comes with finding my purpose. And it comes with, you know, um, building community. And so I feel like no matter what's happening, I can actually say truthfully, I've never had it so good. And mm -hmm. cultivating that, it's, it's not about being Pollyanna or not, you know, getting angry or not getting protests. I'm comfortable with seeing um, a, an angry woman, for instance. That's fine. I just, so it's not about, you know, being like, oh, yeah, everything's sweet when it isn't. It's about really feeling your power and knowing that um, you can be steady and solid in the center of that storm. And indeed, you can stop the storm from raging within. I like that. Well, girlfriend, can we talk? Mm-hmm. I just want to let you know how much we miss your brother. 
oh, okay. the former President Barack Obama, and how much we miss your sister-in-law, the mm -hmm. former First Lady. We truly miss them. And, you know, her book is out now, Becoming, and my friends are rubbing it in my face that they're, they attended the uh, book signing in Chicago. But I want people to know I have my copy, and I'm mm -hmm. caressing it. And I have Maya here to finish the conversation and talk about this. But I just wanted to let yeah, you know well, that— Yeah, well, she's a courageous and powerful woman, because— and I love this book. I have read it, and oh. I think it's really lovely because, you know, she she really owns herself, and she speaks very honestly about um, the challenges, the struggle, um, but also uh, the beauty of her journey. And uh, I especially love all of the stories from Chicago, from her childhood, and you begin to see the different threads that form the fabric of the woman. And she's, uh, you know, she's amazing. So go out and buy the book. Go out and buy the book, Becoming Michelle Obama. I have mine. I'm so excited, and, and I'm, I'm going to read it. And, but anyway, let's move forward. Mm. Tell us about the Obama Foundation and, and mission more. Can we dig a little deeper? I know there is an Obama summit coming up November 18th and 19th mm -hmm. uh, in 2018. And what should people expect? What is going to be the takeaway from this summit? Well, you know, um, the Obama Foundation in general is about kind of taking many of um, the projects and passions and and a community engagement that took place during the administration and kind of um, shaping the, the next iterations and continuing the good work um, to build that beloved community. Uh, so the summit is an opportunity for folks to gather in Chicago, um, but there is so much um, beyond these uh, convening in the way of commitment to the Global Girls Alliance, which was just launched, uh, to promote global girls education and women and girls empowerment. Uh, that is the next, uh, what used to be called, I guess, Let Girls Learn, but that was when um, um, Michelle and Brock were in office. So the Global Girls Alliance, please go and support them. Uh, we really need to uplift women and girls. Yes. And that's a central mission of uh, the Obama Foundation. It's also committed to building civic engagement. It's about voter registration. It's about participation in other ways, even beyond voting. There's My Brother's Keeper, which is committed to helping, um, you know, uh, young men. Um, in especially young men of color, especially, um, you know, um, uh, in, in spaces or communities um, that uh, need our energy and our support and our love and our tenderness. We have, um, in addition, uh, some international commitments that were forged and we wish to continue. So um, there's work, whether it's in Europe or in Africa. This summer we had 200 um, young African leaders from 45 countries who were um, working generously across um, ethnic, religious, national, um, and other boundaries to collaborate and build um, a collective spirit of enthusiasm and commitment to one another. And that work is still going on. And then so um, the program that I'm working on will endeavor to do the same thing in the Asia Pacific region. This stuff is rolled out slowly. You know, yeah, we sure. have um, all of this programming is also um, going to be shaped by the creation of the library uh, in Chicago. And, you know, there is um, no shortage of work to do. Um, and uh, by all means, uh, I encourage everyone who's viewing to go and check out some of the great things happening and the opportunities through the Obama Foundation, but know that there's much, much more to come. Is anything like that coming to Hawaii? Uh, like uh, I said, uh, the Asia-Pacific. Well, yeah, but yeah. Honolulu specifically. Right, so the Asia-Pacific programming will happen in Hawaii as well as in Asia. Oh, so good. We will be pulling young leaders from all over the Asia-Pacific region to Hawaii to share Hawaii 
and to make sure that, you know, Hawaii is a meeting ground, a place of um, collaboration, of bridge building, to um, have Hawaii and uh, its people share the great um, mana'o and, and the great resources and ideas and innovations of this place, um, but also to remind us that we are part of this um, this uh, gorgeous region, and that we should be engaging in more cross fertilization, um, just like the uh, worldwide voyage, and you know, and and the um, uh, the Hogalea's voyages to come. I mean, we need to be connecting with peoples who are vulnerable, you know, who are uh, impacted and uh, by disaster. We yes. need to be um, indigenous people and people who are. Um, but also people who are, you know, um, uh, in, in, you know, in places of great possibility and, um, and creativity. And we need to learn from them and we need to nourish each other. So a lot of that work will happen here. I'm excited about that. And I, I can't believe that we only have a minute or so left. But I, I want, I'm always thinking about the young people. And how do you mentor young people to know their power? Mm. I think that a lot of it is reminding them that um, there's so much they can do today. They can publish uh, online, they can vlog, they can blog, they can create videos on YouTube. They can do so much to spread their voices, to connect. They um, need to be hungry and curious. Uh, to ensure that they are participating in the world and that they're learning about others. And, um, and uh, I think that uh, we have young people today who are inclusive and will build a stronger future. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us and spending your time with us and give peace a chance. Thank you, Maya, for joining us. Thank and thank you, our Sharon. viewers for taking their time to be with us. Peace and love and aloha.